In the last video, we saw that in a hologram, an image appears to move across the film as you change your view. Information about every part of the city exists in every part of the film. It's an all-to-one and one-to-all relationship. How does this work? These results can be explained with a concept called frequency space, or the frequency domain. The frequency domain is like a space which encodes patterns. Each point in the frequency domain represents a pattern. Just these two pixels in the frequency domain instruct the computer to draw a pattern of lines across the whole page. A special mathematical operation called the Fourier transform takes us to the frequency domain. The Fourier transform interprets these pixels as a pattern that spreads across the whole canvas. Just remember, F for Fourier transform and F for frequency domain. Here's another example. We place a pixel at an angle in the frequency domain and closer to the center. A wider pattern of lines is created, now at an angle. In other words, a pattern of lines that took up the whole screen actually carried very little information. All we had to say was, draw a pattern with a frequency given by the value of the dot in a direction given by the angle of the dot and fill up the whole screen with that pattern. The whole screen is affected by each dot in the frequency domain. The process works in reverse, too. If we start with a pattern, a Fourier transform can tell us where to put the dot. Now, let's imagine a more complicated image. Here is our photograph of a city. If we perform a Fourier transform on this image, we get a bunch of dots in the frequency domain. It turns out that the image of the city can actually be made from a bunch of simple line patterns, or a bunch of dots in the frequency domain. Put enough of those together, and you get an entire cityscape. We can build up the city by starting with the low frequency parts and increasing to the high frequency parts. Each area of the frequency domain has information about all the city image, just at different resolution. Points near the center contain the broader patterns, while points near the edge contain the finer details. Now, to emphasize the key point, let's see what happens if we remove just a little bit of the frequency domain. We'll insert a mask, or black out a small range of low frequencies. What happens to the image of the city? If we change only a small region of the frequency domain, we affect all of the original picture. We see noticeable errors across the entire photograph. By removing just a handful of frequencies, we have modified the city photograph everywhere. Each part of the frequency domain affects the whole picture, and a given building that you see in the hologram is constructed by all frequencies working together. This helps explain how it is possible for the hologram of the city to move across the film. A hologram is a snapshot of the frequency domain, so it doesn't capture the buildings, it captures the relationships between the buildings. As long as it faithfully reproduces the relationships, any portion of the film can contain any part of the city image, allowing it to move around. So, now we have a little bit of an idea of the amazing mathematics of holograms in space. Is it possible to create a hologram in time? What would this tell us about space and time in our real world? Check out the next video to find out.